Corcom provides a full-featured estimating module with your subscription. A Corcon estimate includes estimate cost codes, items, RFPs, plenty of log style reports, and the ability to create proposals. The estimating feature can be found by going to leads, selecting an existing lead, and then down to estimates and RFP packages. This is the first in a series of training videos on how to create new estimates, RFPs, and proposals. There's a few settings you should consider before you begin. Let's go to the global settings button, which changes this far left hand menu. Next, we're going to the company settings and then global settings. There is an option to select the rounding in the estimating module. I have mine set to two decimal places. We go down to numbering. There's also a way to set default numbering in estimate items. Since a master cost code list is used as a work breakdown structure in estimating, you should already have imported a master cost code list that works not just for your estimating team, but for procurement, project management, contract admin, and finance. If we go down to templates and reports, you have available the ability to create and save scope templates and estimate markup templates. As mentioned in a previous video, you should also consider the feature settings, lead in project, and lead source. Back to Corcon Home and back to estimating. There are several ways to create new estimates. This will be covered in the videos following this one. To illustrate the estimate properties, we will create one quickly by going to Actions and Add Estimate. Again, a lead was already selected. We'll give it an estimate title. Select a reviewer and the review due date. Importing a prospect or customer is optional. Click Save and Next. And we're going to manually create a new estimate from scratch and click Finish. That brings us to the Estimate Property Details page. By clicking Edit, you can make adjustments. A prospect or customer can be imported at any time. If you're using the master cost code list, which we recommend, that can be selected by code type, and you have the option to determine which level of detail you want to track or simply the lowest level of detail. If you plan on using locations, there's an option for that, and also default location rates for labor and equipment can be added. A default database, we'll leave this one at local, the proposal date, and valid through. We'll leave the overall status at this point as draft and allow today's date to be the status date and then click save and close. To illustrate the navigation tabs and layout of an estimate, I've already imported from Excel a new estimate. How to import an estimate from Excel templates is covered in a separate training video. Next we're going to go to view estimate. The first tab we come to is the estimate cost codes. The estimate cost codes are a way of grouping detailed estimate items and allow for subtotals and grand totals. You have a global changes button. If you want to select one or more, click global changes. Many options are provided. If you click the edit button, some changes can be made right within the grid. Next we'll go to the locations tab. This tab is only available if it was selected in the estimate properties. To add new or import locations, there is an option to the far right. You can add manually or import locations from another estimate. The items in an estimate, in this case, are grouped by division and major from the master cost code list and from an estimate cost code, which is found in the estimate cost codes tab. Individual line items are grouped and subtotaled based on these cost codes. There are a variety of views. We'll go up to the item grouping filter view. Currently I have it set for cost code and grouping all. You may want to choose cost code only, cost code then location, or location then cost code, location only, and so on. Let's change this to cost code only. There's also a way to narrow down what you're viewing. That's the group filter. There's also special filters that come in handy as a means of checkup 
checking for items without quantities, items without cost, items without sell, and so on. If any of these conditions were met, those items would appear in this grid. Next, we'll go over to additional view options, currently set to total. I can also set this to cost rates, which breaks down each item by its cost resource. These also can be used to edit at that level of detail. There's a tab for bid management, which we'll cover in a separate video on RFPs. There's one for global markups. Again, these can be added manually or imported from global markup templates. There's a cost code summary export. Again, multiple views and groupings. An estimate summary reports option with dashboard style reports. The estimate summary reports option has a print proposal with a lot of different available formats and templates. There's a tab for scope, which is a more general or broader scope that is available to print on proposals. There's a tab for drawings and a tab for specs. If we go back to the items, items can be edited several ways. There's an overall edit at the top. We also mentioned earlier the global changes. There's an edit button for each item, or you can simply click on the item description to see more details. The yellow pencil icon is always an edit button. On several tabs, there's an action button that will allow you to add or import. On the items tab, if you go to the estimate cost code, you have a similar actions button. Under locations, another actions button. If you'd like to know more about the information covered in this training video, we encourage you to go to the help articles, to CoreCon, to leads and projects, to estimates, and review the estimate properties form and navigation and views help articles. These include information covered in this training video as well as additional information you might find helpful.